Hello and welcome to Detective Squirrel Investigates. The facts presented here in this video are based on my own findings from my own research and nothing presented in this video is meant to offend anyone. So this is the third and final part of the three part series called They Weren't Jack. The videos for part one and two, Montague John Druitt and George Chapman, will be linked in the description below. And this is the final part of the series on Aaron Kosminski, uh, Jack the Ripper suspect that even today some Ripperologists still believe was the killer. So what makes Aaron Kosminski a favourite suspect? Well, first of all, he was a Pol Polish Jew as was the subject of the previous video, George Chapman. And for the same reasons, this of simply being a Jew was enough to make him a suspect. Another factor that made Kosminski a suspect at the time was the belief that the killer had to be insane to be capable, be capable of such brutality. Kosminski spent much of his life in the Leavesden Asylum for the Insane. In 1894, the then Assistant Chief Constable of London's Metropolitan Police, Sir Melville McNaughton, uh, when writing about the Whitechapel murders, named three suspects. Montague John Drew, the suspect subject of our first video, who, and Ma Michael Ostrog, who was another Polish Jew who lived in the area, and his prime suspect was Aaron Kosminski. Finally, we have to consider the relatively new silence of geoprofiling. Geoprofiling looks at the locations of murders and working work out the possible residence for the killers based on those locations. Kosminski lived at Sion Square in London, and as can be seen by this geoprofile map, shows that the location of each murders and in the centre of all the circles, Sion Square. The killer would have to know the area well. On the night of the double event, after, after Catherine Eddowes had been killed in Mitre Square, the killer must have left through via a dark walkway, on the, the, one that had no street lights. At the time, uh, so the killer had to no, have known it was there killer would then have made their way up to Middlesex Street and onto Colston Street where in a shop doorway they had dropped a piece of Edo's apron they had previously cut off the victim and had used it to wipe off their bloody knife from there the killer would have continued onto their lodgings or their home Sion Square is a conceivable destination Total time on foot from Mitre Square to Sion Square via Goulston Street would have been little more than 10 minutes. But despite this evidence, what is the evidence that proves that Kosminski was not Jack? Well, despite the beliefs of those who believe Kosminski was the killer, even though he did indeed stay in lodgings in Sion Square, there is no evidence that he was there at the time of every murder. In fact, he may have been in an asylum during some of the during that period. There has been much debate over the idea of the killer being insane, if we consider the fact that killer in limited time was able to remove organs from the victims without randomly cutting around the removed organs. This uh, is a person who, after killing Eddowes, took time to wipe their knife and clean and wash their hands. Does that sound like the actions of a madman? I don't think so. Also, there are Kosminski's asylum records. This is a clip from Vic Reeves Investigates from Sky 3 in 2007. I don't think... 
Kosminski died at the Leavesden Asylum for the Imbecile Poor. So I'm going to have a look at his records and see if I can find out more about the man and what he was capable of. I'm hoping the answer lies in the London Metropolitan Archives. There we are, straight away. Kuzminski, Aaron. 147. What does that mean? That wasn't his age, presumably. There he is. Aaron Kuzminski, 7th of February, 1891. Age 26. Single, hairdresser, Hebrew, supposed cause unknown, and then in red writing next to it, self-abuse. He's not epileptic, not suicidal, dangerous to others, no. He declares that he is guided and his movements altogether controlled by an instinct that informs his mind. He says that he knows the movements of all mankind. He refuses food from others because he is told to do so and he eats out of the gutter. Demented and incoherent. It just seems like quite a sad character, actually. According to Kosminski's records, he was believed to be not violent and not a danger to others. In my opinion, these records and the fact that he didn't have that the surgical knowledge necessary to carry out the organ removals prove that Aaron Kosminski was not Jack and simply an easy target for the vigilantes and the local police. And that brings to a conclusion our three-part series, They Weren't Jack. Hope you enjoyed these videos. If you did, um, leave a like. Uh, leave a comment below on any so, uh, cases you would like the Detective Squirrel channel to actually look into in a future video. And um, also subscribe if you haven't already. In the meantime, this is Detective Squirrel, out.